Okay, so welcome to today's webinar. Um, and we're going to look at, me and Tiffan are going to look at a guide to proteomics data analysis using Uniprot and Interpro. So I'm a curator at Uniprot and essentially my job is to look at all the recent research and literature that goes on and is published and curate that into protein entries. So what we're going to be addressing today is um, how to use Uniprot and Interpro resources and the information that we have in our databases and how they can help you analyze your proteomics data or indeed proteins of interest um, and how they can help you analyze your data and understand the proteins that you're looking at in more detail. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to use some of our tools on Unipro and also on Interpro's websites. Um, you'll know where to go for help with that and you might have a better idea of how to analyze your data or maybe have a look in different detail at your proteins of interest. So we've decided we're gonna do a very loosely worked example of how to do a little bit of protein analysis today using both Unipro and Interpro. And I say loosely in the loosest terms, we've picked a couple of proteins of interest um, and we've picked them because it shows um, two different sides to both our resources. So bear with us with that. Um, so first I'm gonna give you a brief overview of Unipro and what we can provide for you. And then Tiffan's gonna take over and do it from an Interpro perspective as well. So Unipro, um, I don't know how familiar everyone is, but we're basically a protein database that aims to provide a high quality, comprehensive and public available protein database that is annotated by expert curators myself. We're based at three sites around the world. So I'm Emberly BI in Cambridge, the UK. Um, we've also got team members in SIB at, in Switzerland and at PIR in Washington in America. So, um, what we do, we work together with both the development team and the curators to annotate um, protein entries and keep the website turning. And essentially what we provide is detailed information, on protein function, interactions and pathway and all other functionally associated data with proteins. The protein sequences themselves, including isoforms um, and how them sequences vary, such as in disease, in mutational analysis and in post-translation modifications. We also act as a repository for stable identifiers that we call accessions, and you might be more familiar with these as Uniprot accession IDs. Um, and we use and take a lot of cross-reference database information. So if you want further information on that, there's a little URL here at the bottom of this page, or you can look on our website. And if you click the About Me section, it'll tell you about how we get all this information from different databases and provide a, li a list of them for you. So, our database is split into two halves. So on the home page, you'll see um, we've got SwissProt and Tremble here on the left. And SwissProt is the manually, manually curated and reviewed side of the database. And that essentially means that every single protein entry on here has been curated by a curator, such as myself, a human. And we've read them scientific data um, in the papers that are published and in the uh, scientific community. We talk to them if we need to and we annotate each entry in detail as well. So there's always one entry per gene, per species, per protein. There's never more than one for each one. And there's cross-references in every single one of these entries to our um, collaborating databases that I've mentioned before. And also all the isoform information can be found in each one of these protein entries. And then the other side of the database, which is a bit larger, is Tremble. And this is our automatically annotated side of the database. Now this is based uh, on rules and automatic annotation. And that means that every single rule um, that is used to add information automatically to these entries have been made and curated by curators such as myself with a background in that specific area of biology or that protein family. So all the information, although automated in these entries is added based on biological rules and uh, pre-existing incidents of them and, and history of them as well. Um, so we do allow for sequence redundancy uh, in here, although there's no protein redundancy. The isoforms each have their own entry at this time, and then they're amalgamated to the canonical entry when they are brought into SwissProp. They're generally com computationally generated with the rule-based annotation in there, but you will still find all your cross-references to the databases in every entry. So although these Tremble entries haven't been looked at by curators like myself and scientific papers added, there is still useful information in there if you happen to end up with these entries in your analysis. So it's well worth taking a look. 
So that's a general kind of overview of what our database consists of. This is our home page, or a little bit what our own home page looks like, um, with the search bar at the top. And then what we're going to look at today is firstly, I'm going to introduce you to our proteomes section where you can download our whole reference proteomes for potentially your proteomics analysis um, with your mass spec. So I'm just going to briefly introduce that. And then I'm going to look at a couple of tools, um, such as searching by peptides and how you can find your reference proteins there. And then also looking at what a protein entry can provide you with, as well as how to look at this on our feature viewer if you're a little bit more visually proactive on your analysis. Um, so how I'm going to do this webinar, I'm basically going to ditch my slides now and go into a um, live demo. But if you want to download the webinar, I'm sure this is um, available afterwards and so are all the slides as well, if you want for reference. So to look at the proteomes download, I'm going to take you to web browser. Okay, so web browser. So this is the Uniprot homepage um, that if you go to uniprot.org, you're going to land on um, with our different sides of our database on the left here. Today, first off, we're going to go to our proteomes section. So you click proteomes here, and this is the page that you end up on. This is just a, a list of all the reference proteomes that we have available. So you can see we have over 20,000 at the moment that are complete reference proteomes. Um, and as you scroll down here, you can see we've got many different organisms available, uh, virus, we've got uh, S. cervicii here, um, Drosophila down here. So, and you can see the complete list, the taxonomy ID, how many proteins are involved, and such and such. But if you're looking for a particular protein, we obviously don't want to scroll down the whole 20,000. So, you can search in your search bar here. I'm just going to search human because that's what I work on the most. And you can see the first one that comes up here is Homo sapien. And then it also links that to human hepatitis if for some reason you're interested in that as well. So, to access the data for the proteomes, you click on the proteome ID, which is unique to every single reference proteome we have. And this will give you the um, overview of what this proteome contains. So your number of proteins, how many genes this refers to, its unique ID, the taxonomy link. So Homo sapiens is 9606. When it was last updated, so in this case, March, um, and it'll also give you a brief description of uh, your species as well. So you can, with human and a lot of the bigger proteomes, it's obviously a big file if you want to download them all, you can do that. So if you want this for like a mass spec analysis as your reference proteome, you can just download it as a compressed or uncompressed file. If you download it as a faster canonical, you're going to get all the main reference canonical protein amino acid sequences. But if you want that to include isoforms, you can click on isoform as well. And as you can see, we've got various other formats if you prefer to download it in a different format too. Uh, I'm not going to do that now because that's quite a big file, but you can also preview um, your first kind of few sections. If you want to download just a chromosome, you can just click chromosome, in this case, number four, and go download protein, protein entries from one select component. Or again, you can just download it all if you want, all 26 in this case. So that's how to get hold of your proteome sequence if you were doing that sort of analysis. Um, and whenever you do download this and use this in your analysis, make a note of the modified version because that is really useful for publication. So everyone knows what proteome reference that you've used at the time because these do get updated quite frequently. So I'm now going to show you how to search via a peptide. So if you've done a mass spec analysis or you've got some peptide data and you don't know where these peptides are from, I'm now going to show you where you can find that information. So on the home page, if you're on the home page, you can scroll down and on the getting started section, there is a peptide search link. However, wherever you are on Uniprot, we always have this toolbar along the top here. And these links are always there, including the help and the contact us buttons over here. So if you click peptide search on that, you're going to get a search box like this. And I have prepared earlier some peptides to search by. So I'm just going to click search on this because this might take a few seconds. And depending on your internet speed, this will take a few seconds. But in here, you can paste multiple peptides or you can also upload a file of peptide sequences if you want. And what this is doing for us right now is searching all of the Uniprot database, trying to figure out where these peptides sit inside our database and what proteins they link to. So in this case, um, it's given us a results table that looks like this. And you can filter this results table 
by organisms. You can type your organism name in there if it's not listed. You can search by the side of the database, so reviewed or unreviewed, and by various other methods as well. And what it's given us here is it's given us the entry name and the accession ID, the protein name, gene name, and organism that's from. Because obviously it's not just searched human, it's searched the entire database. So it's given us loads of different species back here. The length of the protein and amino acids. And then it's saying this peptide matches at residue 705. And then this peptide, which was the second one I searched, was matching at 162. So in this case, both these peptides match to this UHRF1 in human. It's also brought up a few other results because this peptide also matches in other species. So here you can see it's the same protein, but in different species. So we, we've got macaque here and an olive baboon there. Um, and if you were, let's show you another example. If you were to put a couple of peptides in here and you didn't know where they were from and they happened to be from two different proteins, I'm just going to show you how it would show you that in the research, the, the results table, just for reference. Um, so though that's obviously um, classified that because both peptides match to the top protein, in this case, you're going to have one peptide to each, but it will still classify it according to the best match, and best reviewed entries. So in this case, we've got our UHR of one again, and that peptide matches at that position. And then the other peptide matches to our other protein of interest, which today is NBAS in human, uh, and that matches at residue 1005. So I hope that gives you an idea of how you can take some unknown peptides or maybe even known peptides and just pull out your protein of interest information. So now I'm gonna introduce you to what a protein entry actually looks like uh, in case you've not navigated there before. So I've just clicked on the accession ID in the results table. And this is the main page you're going to land on for a protein entry. So you've got your protein name, gene name, the species that you're looking in. So organism is human. Um, this is a reviewed entry. So this has been um, touched by a curator and man manually annotated. And we've got experimental evidence that this is a protein at protein level as opposed to mRNA. It will always start with a function comment to give you an overview of what this protein does. Uh, and then usually the entry is in the same order as every other entry, but obviously if a protein doesn't have catalytic activity, that won't be there. So just bear that in mind. In this case, it does have catalytic activity. Um, so the page is scrollable um, quite extensively. So, and you see, we've got go terms that are imported here, uh, keywords that are brought up here, or an entire section on names and taxonomy and synonyms. Um, and then subcellular localization. So these are all clickable and they will all give you a description of say what the nucleus is and also where all this information has come from. So in this case, it's come from publications. So I'll leave you to explore that in your own sort of time. If you're not a scroller, you can click on all these links on the left-hand side and they will take you to subsections of interest as well. So if you just want information on the structure of the protein, you can just click structure and go straight there. Um, that is well worth an explore. If you want further information on what a protein entry is and how it's structured and how to navigate in each bit individually, we do have a webinar available for that as well, if you want something very Uniprot based. Um, but today I'm going to show you the feature viewer. So this is for people that are quite um, like to see their results visually. And what this shows you um, is the amino acid sequence along the top in numbers. This is residue number going along the top. Um, and it shows you all the different domains, sites, areas, uh, structural features of your protein of interest um, in graphical format. So we've got all the domains here. So we've got a ubiquitin-like domain here, at residues 1 to 78, and that's come from ProSite. So it shows you where that data has come from, and that link is clickable to take you straight to ProSite. We've got all the PTM information here, and for some reason, PTMs always take one or two clicks. So... This one is at residue 639 and it's a phosphoserine. It's phosphorylated by CDK1 and that has come from a publication and that's its PubMed ID. But for people that are a little bit proteomics orientated, you can also click on the proteomics section here and it shows you where all your unique peptides and also non-unique peptides reside. So if you've got a particular peptide that's popped up in your experiment or of interest, or you know that that peptide is important in binding, you can see where it is along here. And, and each one of these peptides is clickable as well. 
Um, so this particular peptide is at these residues and it's come from peptide atlas and it will always give you a cross-reference to the reference protein that was used. And if I can find another one that isn't peptide atlas, because we do have... I always click the ones with peptide atlas, I don't know why, it's like a bad habit. <laughs> There is, here we go. So we've got one here, see, with proteomics DB and max QB on, and these are all linked out um, to them resources as well. So you've got various sources being drawn in here for these, um, these proteomic data. Um, below this, get rid of that. Below this, we also have structural information. So if we have structural information for PDB available to us, this will be present in um, a 3D format which you can spin and rotate. We have access here on the left, so you know what you're doing. Um, you can also zoom in on particular residues and it will hopefully load all the interactions available. So you can see you've got all your potential interactions around here. And as you hover over them, it will tell you what sort of interactions they are. So that one is a hydrogen donor interaction there. Um, as you scroll down, you've also got uh, the PDB structure you're looking at and the residue positions and all these links are clickable. So if you were to click on this PDB link here, it would take you straight to PDB and all the experimental information that made this structure and all the further details on that as well. So for those of you that are very structurally orientated, this might be of use to you or, or at least a quick way to find the structures of interest in, in your protein. Um, so for this particular protein, we've got quite a lot, as you can see here. Um, now, this protein doesn't have a lot of variants, and although it looks like there is a lot, that isn't many. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like when we've got a lot of variants. So I'm going to go to our, our next protein, this neuroblastoma amplified sequence, um, or NBAS, and I'm going to go back to the feature viewer. Um, the feature viewer sometimes takes a, a few seconds to load if you're on a slightly slower internet connection, so don't panic if it doesn't pop open straight away. Uh, and we're going to go on the variants. So you can see what a lot of variants look like in the feature viewer. And, and this can get quite overwhelming. Um, but first, what do I mean when I say a variant? So a variant, when we describe a variant in Uniprot, it means an amino acid change um, that, that is changed from normal. So it's a change from the canonical sequence that isn't involved in splicing event or isoforms. So in this case, it, it usually involves, um, it's involved in disease or it's found in an abnormal phenotype or a patient. Um, and you can fit, you can filter all these variants uh, by the source. So whether they've been reviewed at Uniprot or whether they've been imported by ClinVar or just large scale studies. So you can see the majority of these are large scale, scale study imports. You can also filter them by consequence. So if you're particularly interested in this protein because it causes a disease, if you click likely disease, you can see we've, we filter this down quite stringently. Um, and we use a uh, ClinVar's calculator to figure out whether these particular variants are significant or not for these diseases. Um, so a lot of these have been manually curated by curator as well. And if you click on one of these variants, it will tell you the position, the amino acid change, and that this causes a missense. Um, it gives you a variant ID. And if it's associated with a particular disease or phenotype, it'll always give you a description of that. It will give you a cross-reference to OMIM if one's available, and then it will tell you where this data has come from. So in this case, it's publication, and that's its PubMed link and ID as well. So I hope that gives you a bit of a, an overview of how you can view your protein feature visually, um, if you're less inclined to view visually. All the same information is available in tables. So you can just click Feature Table on the left here, and everything you've just seen is in a feature table view as well, which is compressed a little bit more. Um, but yeah. So what I'm now going to go on to show you, I've gone back to the main protein entry page for UHRF1. So this is the page you land on when you type in UHRF1 into Uniprot. And I'm going to show you how you can extract from our database the full amino acid sequence for this particular protein. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this because you might have found this protein of interest. You didn't know what it was five minutes ago, and now you have a kind of an idea of what function it does or what context it works in. And you might want to analyze this a bit further. And a lot of databases, websites, and tools require you to have the full canonical or the full isoform sequence of your protein of interest. So I'm going to show you how to get hold of that. So you can now take that protein of interest find its sequence and go ahead and, and do further analysis on that. So 
I prefer to use a tool on the left to do this because it's really simple. Um, and you just click sequences. So every protein on Uniprot will have a sequences section. So if you click sequences, it snaps you straight down to the sequences section and it shows you the sequences are complete in this case. And we've got two isoforms that are produced by alternative splicing. So first of all, you've got your isoform one and it tells you the length of the, iso the isoform, um, its predicted mass, which is always useful. Uh, if you work in the lab, uh, and then your isoform two as well, and, and any of the sequences that might be of interest that you see these are currently in tremble and they haven't been curated into the entry. So uh, in this case, it will tell you that isoform two, unless they're major, major changes, it usually tells you kind of an abbreviated version of how this is different from isoform one. So in this case, the methionine at residue one, instead of it just being a methionine, it's actually a little bit of a run of amino acids. Um, so in this case, you can just click faster on that and it gives you the entire amino acid sequence. Uh, and at the top, it tells you which database it's from. So SP means Swiss prop. You've got the Uniprot accession ID here. You've got its abbreviation here, its protein name there. Uh, then you've got its taxonomy, so Homo sapiens. You've got its tax ID, which is 9606. Its gene name, UHRF1. And PE just means protein evidence, which is a Uniprot identifier to say that this protein, if PE equals one, this protein is definitely made into a protein. It's not just a piece of mRNA floating around. Um, so this is your amino acid sequence for UHRF1. I'm just gonna, if you want to know how to align sequences, we've got a webinar that shows you how to do that. But essentially you can add any sequence at any time to your basket, which acts like a shopping basket. Um, and up here at the very, very top of the page, I realize I've just scrolled a long way, but at the very top of your page, you have a shopping basket and you can, when this is full, you can click your sequences in here and align them. But I'm just going to click why well, I show you how to do find the sequences for the other protein. I'm just going to click this align button here just to show you that if you've got two isoforms and you want to know how different they are in a visual format, if you click align, it will auto automatically do an alignment between the two sequences. So that job's running. I'm just going to, uh, this is on the NBAS protein we did earlier. I'm just going to show you how to get that sequence again. So on the main entry, we're going down to sequences and then just faster format. And there you go. So you've got the full amino acid sequence to get all the information at the top. And when you get an align result, so this is between them two isoforms. Um, when you get an align result, you just show this difference at the beginning, which is what it had, it had abbreviated for us um, in that little sequences page. So hopefully that will give you a little bit more of an idea of how to analyze your sequences and how to get hold of them to do further analysis. So I'm gonna pop back to my presentation there. And frustratingly, I can't get into presentation mode because my toolbar is in the way. But essentially what I've shown you today is I've shown you the home page and how to navigate it a bit. I've shown you how to do a proteomes download to download your reference proteome for further analysis. I've shown you how to do a peptide search. So if you've got an unknown, unknown peptide, you can search by what protein uh, it refers to and how to filter and look at your results table for that. I've shown you how to look at a protein features viewer for your protein entry and how the structured information and proteomics peptide information is presented in that. I've also shown you how to look at variants and how to filter the variant table. And then shown you how to download your individual protein sequences of interest. So that gets us to the point where you've had an unknown peptide. After you've done your experiment, you've had a look at the protein entry, it's further information, and you've managed to download its sequence for further analysis. So I'm now going to swap over to Tiffan from Interpro, and she's going to show you how you can use these proteins or these protein sequences to analyze its protein features and domains. Thank you, Emily. Um, so, yeah, um, now that you've seen how um, Uniprot works, um, a few uh, words about uh, Interpro. Um, so what is, first, what is uh, Interpro? So Interpro uh, is a protein, um, provides a classification of proteins into uh, families, domains, 
and sites. And um, it uh, does that using uh, predictive models from 13 different uh, member databases. And uh, um, it also provides a tool called Interproscan for a functional analysis of protein sequences. And all the information provided in Interpro uh, relies on uh, liter scientific literature. So let's imagine you have uh, a protein sequence, and then you have this particular signature from um, the um, uh, PFAM database that is matching one part of the sequence. So what the Interpro uh, creators are doing is that they are um, integrating this particular signature in an entry. Um, uh, which for which we have uh, assigned an accession and a type. And we repeat this process for all the different uh, signature from the different member databases. And we assign a type depending on uh, which uh, part and um, how many uh, protein they are matching. And uh, um, the, thing to, the important thing to note is that um, an interpro entry is an umbrella to one or more uh, um, member database signatures. So if um, some signatures, like for example, in this case, are matching um, the same um, set of proteins and represent the same entity, they are then integrated in the same uh, interpro entry. Um, when the uh, signature is matching the full length of the protein or um, almost the full length, then we assign it the family uh, entry type. An important uh, thing to uh, remember is that all the interpro entries are created uh, manually and, and they are updated more or less regularly uh, at each um, Uniprot update and um, when there is also a member database update. This is the annotation for one uh, particular uh, protein, but the power of Interpro is that it provides this annotation for the millions of uh, sequences available in Uniprox. So as I mentioned before, um, Interpro is a consortium of 13 member databases, which um, are using different methods and focus on different um, 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 particular interest on proteins, for example, some uh, focus on uh, structural um, or functional domains, other on protein families, and um, other ones on protein features like uh, binding sites or active sites. And depending on what they are matching, they are integrated in different uh, interpro entries with, to which it is assigned a type. We have five different entry types in interpro, which is a homologous superfamilies. Um, the family, the domain, and repeat, and sites. So what is the relationship between Interpro and Uniprot? So as Emily mentioned before, uh, Uniprot is made of um, the Swissprot and, uh, sequences, which are manually annotated, and the Trumbull sequences, which are um, annotated automatically. So all, from all these sequences in Uniprot, the Interpro member databases um, generate their models or signatures, which then are integrated into Interpro entries. These Interpro entries um, are then included into uh, the Interpro scan software, which is um, the software used to perform protein sequence uh, analysis. This, and this, all this information is used uh, to make uh, uni rules, which are then used to annotate uh, Trombo uh, sequences and update Trombo sequences in Uniprot. So as of Interpro uh, 86.0, which we released um, last week, there's the coverage of um, Uniprot sequences by Interpro is 81.7. This includes 96.7% uh, of um, coverage of the Swiss prod sequences and 81.7% of the uh, Trumbull sequences. So there are, this is um, um, the interface of the Interpro website, which I'm going to move to uh, in a minute. But um, there, are four, there are four different of um, search you can do in Interpro. You can do a, a protein sequence search. You can do a, perform a, a text search for 
any type of text or accession. You can do a domain architecture uh, search. So this is uh, the arrangement of the different domains throughout the length of the protein. And you can also do a Bruce search. So uh, this is um, to apply different filters um, to um, have, for example, a set of um, interpret entries of interests. So today I'm going to focus only on the sequence search, text search and uh, Bruce feature. So first, uh, let's look at the uh, sequence search. To do that, I'm just going to go to the Interpro website. Um, so if we have our sequence here, and I'm going to go uh, to the Interpro website. So this is um, the homepage of the Interpro. Um, you, you can see at the uh, top um, the version of the release. You can click on to see more details about uh, the data uh, for this release. Um, below, you have a, a quick search and then um, some information about the member databases and different types you can explore. Also have uh, the list of latest entries, uh, favorite entries, which uh, I will explain uh, later, and the recent search uh, you have done for a quick and easy access um, for when you uh, come back to Interpro another time. Also have um, some um, blog uh, post articles about the new features um, or protein focus articles and uh, a lot more is available on this page. So let's focus on the uh, sequence search. So I will do go to the search, uh, search by sequence. So on this page, um, you have a text box which, for which you can paste your sequence of interest. You can also uh, upload a FASTA file containing your sequence. Um, so for now, I'm just going to paste a sequence I, I copied earlier. And you also have this uh, advanced option button where you can uh, rename your um, job, job and um, select the particular member databases you want to run the uh, search against. Um, once you have selected all the options you, you wanted, you can just uh, click on the search button. Now, the search is powered by the InterpoScan software, which can be uh, downloaded in the download section. Um, or um, you can also, um, we have a, a version uh, used which you can use on our um, resource. And um, if you run it, um, on, we download it and run it on command line, you can then import your results uh, here to have them um, more easily accessible um, in the, um, more easily readable um, is in the website. So then you have the table of your last, um, most recent uh, search, a protein search. Um, you can uh, order them uh, depending on the result name or um, the created date. So you can see the sequence I just uh, submitted is uh, searching. There are different stages. So there's the searching one and the job has been submitted and it's currently calculated. You have the um, uh, finished when represented by the green tick, and you have this uh, file when it's uh, the job has been saved in the browser, or you have uh, imported um, the uh, the sequence. Um, so while your uh, sequence is processing, you can carry on uh, doing anything on your computer, and you will get a pop-up notification telling you that the search has completed. So uh, for now, I, I run previously uh, this search. So I'm just going to um, show you the results obtained. You just click on the um, result identifier and you will be redirected to the, um, to the page. So on this page, um, you have um, different um, information. You have two tabs at the top, the overview and sequence, and there is also the entry one um, appearing when you haven't saved uh, your data in your browser. So when the sequence tab, you can just um, um, select part of your sequence or the whole sequence to perform a new search, for example, uh, using a, a specific set of member databases, or you can also uh, run the Hammer uh, web server uh, set of tools uh, to, for example, to um, 
um, to generate um, a model out of um, multiple protein alignments. So you see, um, my job has not finished and the pop-up um, showed up. Um, so if we are back on our um, uh, Interproscan uh, search results, then you have um, the uh, job title, um, the length of your protein, um, different actions, and so this time you can delete your sequence and the status. And then below that, you have the protein family membership uh, predicted that this sequence belongs to. And uh, you can, um, so you can see this one uh, belongs to the UHRF1 F2 uh, like uh, protein family. And below that is the protein sequence viewer. So similarly to um, what was available in um, Uniprot, you have the gray bar at the top representing the length of the protein sequence submitted. You have um, uh, some hydrophobicity um, information, which you can do, see more when you zoom in. But to zoom in, you move the gray bar, the edges of the bar at the top. Uh, use the plus and minus button. And you can also view uh, the result in full screen mode. All the results are um, displayed um, on, um, yeah, are categorized by um, interpro entry uh, types. So you have family, domain, homologous superfamily. You can collapse the track by clicking on the domain uh, title to hide it if you're not interested in a particular section. And on the results, so the matches, there are uh, multiple lines. So the top line every time is the interpro um, entry and below it, the different member database signatures that have been integrated in this particular uh, entry. Um, so now let's have a look at one interpro uh, entry to see how the interpro entry page looks like. So on this page, so you have um, the type indicated by um, this logo on the left-hand side. So this one is a family. Then you have um, the name of the family, the interpro accession, and this star indicated. So this uh, star either is gray or uh, orange. And if it's uh, orange means you have saved it as your favorite entry and you will have um, it available from the interpro homepage. Then there is different uh, tabs giving more information about this particular entry. On the right hand side, you have um, the member database as, um, contributing to this particular interpro entry, which you can uh, click on to go see the uh, corresponding signature page. And you have uh, the description uh, of this uh, particular interpro entry. Um, for example, um, it's the, the, all the domains, its functions, um, implication in any disease. And this is all supported by literature references. We also profess, provide re references to other um, databases. Let's go back to our um, protein sequence. So you can see this um, particular protein is matching uh, different, uh, has different domains, so zinc, zinc finger, and etc. So you can go and explore um, uh, everything. And at that very bottom, um, we have um, GoTerm annotation. So if any of the interpro entries matching um, is has a, a GoTerm uh, that has been assigned to it, then it will show up here. So in this case, we can this protein is uh, thought to be a protein binding protein. So let's now look at um, a, a search by text. So the search by text, you can either go from uh, the search to search by text or on the right hand, uh, top right hand corner, you have a quick search uh, bar. So um, let's, let's look at the protein um, Emily analyzed earlier, which was um, A2RRP1. And then you run the search. Um, so this goes directly to the protein page. But the difference is when you go um, to the search by text, 
and you can see all the previous search I've performed uh, show here. So I can just uh, click on one. And in this page, uh, you will have uh, the, the, the exact match, so which will uh, show you uh, what you have uh, searched, um, uh, the protein page uh, I have shown you before. And below, what is interesting is all the different interpro entries and the member database signatures are matching this particular uh, protein. And when the, you search for um, a particular word, for example, it can be it will be highlighted in the text, um, and you can disable that using the uh, toggle icon here. You can export the results in JSON or TSV formats. By default, you will show uh, only uh, you'll see only uh, twenty results at a time, but you can um, change this setting. So let's have a look at the uh, one particular um, PFAM signature. Now this is a PFAM um, member database uh, signature page. So in here you have um, the logo indicating which member database uh, you are looking at, um, the uh, signature name that's been assigned by the member database, uh, the accession, and you have a different type of some summary information provided by the member database. On the right hand side you have uh, the interpro accession. Uh, where from which this particular signature is integrated in, and you have a link to the resource itself. But what I'd like to show you today is um, that so recently we have introduced um, the structural models for PFAM signatures, which don't have an experimental structure um, that has been determined for them. So when you click on the structural model, then you are redirected um, to um, the structural model page which shows you at the top, uh, when it has uh, finished loading, um, the structure um, and, and um, the color uh, code used in this is uh, blue for uh, highly conserved um, to uh, good quality, sorry, and to red for um, not so good quality model. You can download all the information about the structural model. And um, below it, we have um, a heat map. So when you hover over it, you can see um, the residue in contact highlighted in the 3D structure. And at the bottom, we have um, the different uh, contacts based on the um, seed, PFAM seed alignment. And you can just hover over it or click on one residue to highlight um, the residues that are in contact with each other. The last thing I wanted to cover today is um, the Bruce feature. And so you can filter the um, data using uh, different criteria. So you can either Bruce by interpro, member database, uh, protein structure, taxonomy, proteome or set. And when you do so, so let's go, for example, a Bruce by uh, protein. Then you are um, going to the Bruce page where you can, um, sorry, uh, you can apply different filters. So you can select uh, the member database uh, you want to filter the data uh, for. Uh, you can um, Select, for example, only to show the reviewed protein corresponds to uh, Swiss prot, and you can uh, select a particular species. And so, for example, if you select uh, one of the species, then um, it, it will process. You can also filter the data uh, by doing a text search, and you can export everything in um, uh, using our API. One last thing I wanted to mention here. So uh, when you are performing, you are reaching a new page. Um, once the data are fetched, the Interpro logo will, uh, will be moving, indicating that uh, the page is loading. So um, um, be patient. And um, on the right hand side, uh, the three bars um, show, will show you the service uh, status. So at the very bottom, you can see the service. If any of them is read, it might explain why sometimes um, the data are not fetched or taking too long to be fetched. Um, so 
that's why that is uh, all I wanted to um, um, show you today. Um, and I will uh, pass back to uh, Emily for the rest. Thanks, Stefan. So um, just to finish up here, I hope that's given you a bit of a, an overview of how you can take some of your protein data and look at your target proteins of interest and give an overview of what functions and features they have in both Uniprot and Interpro. Um, if you need any further help and documentation on this, we're obviously going to answer a few of your questions after this webinar, but we've, um, I noticed a few questions have popped up about the API. We kind of knew this was going to happen. It always does proteomic stuff. We both do have functional APIs. Um, so the Uniprot Proteins API has an online access at um, this URL here. You can also access that from the Uniprot web page. If you scroll to the bottom of the home page, there is a section that says um, programmatic access and there's a link there. There's also a paper associated with that if you want to read of how that's put together. If you just want to run through from a biologist point of view, um, so if you can't, if you're not particularly fantastic at programming, but you still want to be able to pull some of these kind of bulk protein requests out, you can still use our API. Um, we have a webinar for that, so if that's more your thing. Uh, so if you look on the train online courses there, we, we do have a um, we do have a programmatic API, which is this, this URL here. But we do have a, a webinar that I did back in February, and it's called um, Uniprot for Proteomics Scientists. Uh, and that covers the biology behind some of the, the Uniprot um, proteomics stuff. It maybe overlaps with a little bit we've done today, but it does then also go into the API. So that might be of use to you. Um, on our website, there's always the help buttons. Um, so feel free to contact us through the help links and the videos. And there's, there's always tutorials. And for every page you're on, if you click help, it will bring up the relevant help section as well. If you want to contact us, regarding basically anything or there's a protein you find needs updating the please contact us at help at uniprot.org similarly for uh, interpro we also have an api so accessible so interpro slash api and we also have made a webinar uh, last year explaining how to use um, the api um, you can access the Interpro uh, website documentation and have more information throughout the website when there is an I icon, you can click on it and we'll, uh, you will be redirected to the corresponding section of the Interpro documentation, or you can access the Interpro di documentation uh, directly through this URL. And for um, if you want more information um, or you, want, uh, you have any question, you can contact us through our um, help desk, interhelp at EBI, and can also follow us on Twitter. So just to finish off on the Uniprot side, uh, we'd like to thank our funders. So we're funded by the NIH and various institutes at the NIH, as well as working in collaboration with the um, Research Institute in Switzerland and Open Targets, as well as here at EMBL. Um, we're, we're based in Cambridge at, on EMBL's EBI campus. Um, and can I have the next slide, please? And this is our team. I say we're based across the three sites in Switzerland, um, in Washington, in America, and Hinkston, Cambridge, where I'm based. And as you can see, our staff are pretty evenly spread across the sites. There's quite a few of us. So thank you very much for listening. And the uh, Interpro side, um, we have the curators who are in charge of um, annotating and creating and updating the interpro entries, the production team, which makes sure, sure our uh, release process goes smoothly. Um, are the web developers in charge of uh, developing the new features uh, in the interpro website. And um, go ahead, Alex Bateman. Um, so that's all. Um, so this is part of um, a guide to webinar uh, series that has been running for um, a few um, months now. And the next one coming up is a guide to analyzing, analyzing binding sites in protein structure. And in October, we also have a um, structural bioinformatic course uh, coming up uh, for which uh, you can apply uh, until the 9th of July. So register if you are interested. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Emily and Tiffany, uh, for today's webinar.
and thank you, Paul, for answering some of the questions. Uh, so we have quite a few questions there. Some have been answered already by uh, Paul and Emily, but there are a few uh, which remain unanswered. So I will probably read out the questions. I think Emily, you already selected a few which you would like to answer live. So first is, uh, can the peptide search be done programmatically using the API? I think you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. so I'm just gonna share my screen again because it's just, it's just easier just to show you. So I mentioned we've got a, we've got a proteomics API webinar anyway. Um, so that is obviously on that webinar. So if you're interested in that, please have a look. But this is basically uh, where you land if you type in even if you just type into Google Uniprop Proteins API, this is this is what's going to come up. And this is the main page for our API. I won't talk too much about it because we already have a webinar on it. But if you search or click on the proteomics section, um, it gives you a little drop down box here. Um, I'm just going to move, there we go. So this proteomics section here, each section in the API is a drop down box essentially. So um, and without going into too much detail or without confusing people um, that are not programmers, uh, this is a multi-query ser search form and you can put your accession ID in here um, and you can, you can put a protein accession ID there. You can search via peptide. So if you want to put multiple peptides in here, the best way to do it is to put peptide, comma, peptide, comma, peptide. Um, and it will search each individual peptide over the entire database. And you can then also filter it by if you just want to know if these peptides are unique or not. And um, that will then feed back on if these peptides are unique, what protein they're, um, they're associated with, where that data comes from, if it'll also take what species it's in and that sort of thing. Um, if you want to do the opposite and say, well, I've got this protein of interest, do you want to tell me where what all the peptides are? You can put your accession ID in here. Um, in fact, I might just do that just to show you. So you can put your accession ID in here. Um, and you can even tell it what sort of data source you want it to come from, but I'm just going to leave it open and you just hit try it out. Now, this will look quite confusing, but essentially uh, this is your result section. Um, you have your sequence here and your information, and then it will start feeding you back each peptide. So it'll tell you the residue number, where it's got that information from, which is our proteomes and peptide atlas here, then the peptide sequence and whether it's unique or not, and then it, it carries on. So although the API is based around programmatic access, as a biologist who doesn't understand that much prog programming like me, you can still get all that data back. And there's also a, down, a download option for that as well. If you want to search via, let's say, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of peptides, um, yes, I know that's a thing, you're much better off doing this programmatically. But again, if you want a starting point, we have a webinar for that. And it will also give you sample code. So if I've searched this via accession ID, and if you want to do the same thing in, say, Python, this is what you need to start with and then edit that to just get direct requests to our servers. Um, so that will give you a start. And if you want to download all these results via a URL, you can as well, if that's your thing. But I say we've, we've got a webinar for this from a biologist's point of view and a programmatic point of view. So please look them up if you want some more details on them as well. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is, is it possible to check homology of a peptide or, or its whole protein with motifs of transcription factors, DNA binding factors? So me, me and Paul were discussing this because uh, <laughs> Paul works on a lot of transcription factors. We don't know what the best approach would be for this. Um, I would go around this doing an alignment. Um, so I would, I would put in my basket, this, this is the really embarrassing point where a biologist can't remember a transcription factor's name, um, but I would put in my basket UHRF1, so I'd add that to basket um, to there. Take another transcription factor. So just off the top of my head, SOX7, and I'd add that to basket. And then, I mean, this is a really, really rough approach. I appreciate that. But, so this is my shopping basket with my proteins in, and I can hit a line on that. And what that will do is it will compare the two proteins. It won't necessarily compare the domains, but you can access all the domains through the API as well. 
So if you want to do that manually and do comparisons, another way you can do. Um, with regards to specific families, I don't think that's something we support on Uniprot, unfortunately. Um, but this is what you kind of get if you're comparing um, pure sequences. But again, you can get access to all the domain residues if you want to just align specific domains as well. All right. Uh, so I think the next question is for Tiffany. Is it possible to search bulk sequences? Um, so it is not possible to do that through uh, the Interpro interface um, because yeah, that will uh, take too long. But um, using the Interpro scan software directly, um, you can do that. Yes. Uh, is there any R package that is uh, an interface with Interpro? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, although we provide, um, so through our, uh, there is a download, um, or oh, I can maybe share the screen, it will be uh, easier to. So on the Interpro, um, in the results, you have your downloads which you can go to and you can select the data to download. This gives you um, a brief access, um, a brief, yeah, an easy way to access the API data, uh, even if you are not familiar with uh, programming. So you can select different, uh, um, apply different parameters, um, and then we provide the link to the API. And then there is um, a different a um, bit of, of code you can reuse. Um, this is provided in Python, Perl, and, and JavaScript at the moment. So yeah, we don't have um, any uh, R package for that. Okay. Um, next question. Can you download specific features from the feature viewer of Protein of Interest? Yes, you can. I've just been looking at this again. I'm just going to steal the screen for everyone here. So I had this open earlier. So this is our feature viewer again, um, table on the left. So um, to download all the features in this feature viewer, there's a download button here in the top left. Uh, and you've got an option between uh, JSON, XML, and GFF format as well. Um, I don't know if you have an option within that to just download, say, PTMs, but you can definitely go get a hold of everything and then um, just pick out what you want there. Yeah. Right. Um, next question is, can we get protein structure of our own protein sequence? So no, uh, at the moment we don't, yeah, provide uh, structural models for um, anything as that is um, in Interpro. Can we submit these annotations to database Uniprot? Just know the procedure. Um, so we've got a community. Oops, it is. Yeah, you can zoom by the way on this. It looks a bit weird, but um, yeah, we do have a feature for that. So if I'm, I'm just going to take back to the homepage here. So if you put in uh, protein of interest, let's try something different. Um, so uh, I've just gone to a, another protein entry here. Um, just a different one than what we've been looking at today, but it doesn't matter which one ever you go to. This is your original protein entry page. Um, and then you've got a link here for community curation um, and ad publication or even feedback. So if you've got anything about this entry you want to talk to us about, um, you can give us feedback um, and suggest updates and corrections to us. If you want to add a publication, so if you've done a paper on this particular protein that you feel might add something to the entry, feel free to work through our form and tell us what information you've got in that paper and we'll take a look at it. And we've also got um, a community curation section, which is this link here, um, that tells you everything uh, that some other, uh, someone else has currently submitted for that, that we'll take a look at as well. So you can look at what other people have submitted as well. Um, and then you can also add your own um, from a publication point of view. If you want to add peptides, um, so protein amino acid sequence from your data, we also have an application called SPIN as well. Um, that's off, just off the home page. Right. Uh, there's a question I think is for both of you. Uh, can Uniprot or Interpro give information on characterizing a protein family uh, through inputting a string of unannotated sequences? Uh, we would just do a blast. 
I think would be our best approach a bit if I can do better than that probably yeah just uh yeah put your your sequence in the in the in the search uh, in sequence search and then you have all the annotation um, from similar protein or yeah all the models um, integrated into parentheses. Okay, uh, and there's one question about the variance. Uh, can we get sequence variations in in variance, or is there a way to visualize variance? Yeah, so the best way we've, I mean, there's a few ways to visualize variance. Uh, I'm just going to take a point on b in why I've got it open. Um, so the best way to visualize variance uh, is probably in the feature viewer. Um, this will tell you when you're looking at this variant table, it will tell you everything that's automatically imported. So from large scale studies. So if you were to filter, you see got most of these still stay there because they've been imported by large scale studies. Most of the ones uh, that are Uniprot reviewed, there's a few less because obviously um, we've manually done that. It takes more time. Um, so you'll, you'll find a lot of that sort of data there. If you want something a bit more specific, maybe to um, the curated stuff, you can go onto the feature table. There we go. So our variance down the bottom here, this shows you a lot, and this is everything that's automatically imported as well as curated. And you know there's a lot that's automatically imported because you can filter by large scale studies and not much disappears. Uh, and same with Plimvar as well. If you want something that's a bit more curated, you can hit Uniprot reviews. So it gives you an idea of, of how the variants are curated within the entry. So if you want information on a particular variant, you can open that up as well. If you then look into the, so this one's quite cancer um, and endometrial related. And then if you want something uh, in a more tabular view, you can go onto the feature table and this will give you everything to do with um, the amino acid sequence and all the changes and all the features that we've recorded. So mutagenesis refers to someone has experimentally changed something. So you see you've got uh, effects on interaction and strongly reduces binding. Whereas if you scroll down to the variant section, it will tell you more about disease. Here you go, natural variants. So these natural variants are more in, in cancer, in this cancer, in that cancer. Um, so that's probably your best way of getting hold of that sort of information there. Um, it will also tell you the source, but most of these will be manually created as opposed to automatically imported. If you want everything, you're much better off downloading straight from the feature viewer like I showed a second ago with the download icon up here. Another way of accessing it um, would be, I'm just going to take that accession ID. Another way of accessing it without going into too much detail will be to go into the variation section of the API um, and just stick in the accession ID in here. Do it really simply. You have loads of different options available to you, but for really kind of brief overview, you can just put the accession ID in there. Wait for it to load. And it doesn't load. There you go. So um, again, it gives you the amino acid sequence back here, and then it starts with variant at position two. Its alternative amino acid is a G, and then it gives you, it's a SNP because it's got an RSID. Um, it's in Nomad. And then it will start giving you further information about a lot like its genomic change, et cetera, et cetera. So it depends what sort of detail you want and what sort of format you want as a readout, basically. But there's, there's quite a few ways of getting hold of variant data. Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll probably take one last question, which is uh, if you could suggest some best tools to look for protein interactions. But well, I can just say, come to our next webinar as well, because we have, it's, it's more about ligand protein interactions uh, on next Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. UK time. But yeah, Emily or Tiffany, do you have any solution? I can steal the, I'll actually remember to steal the screen this time. Can you see it? <laughs> um, so on, um, on the homepage of Protein Homepage, our interaction data information is all under interaction on the side here. All this is manually curated, uh, which I appreciate is quite long, but any imported information, which we actually don't have 
Oh, here we go. So it, this isn't actually in a graphical presentation for beta catenin because there's so many of them. But essentially, we have a table with all the information, uh, the interaction partners in, and all their links. This one is a little bit clunky, but let me show you one that isn't quite so uh, large. So we're going back to our UHRF1 again, just going into the entry. And then we're clicking interaction again. Um, so for the ones that have a few less binary interactions, it will show you a graphic like this. So instead of a table, you'll get a graphic and each one of these is clickable as well. And it will tell you, um, the, in fact, these are interesting because they're involved in pathology, but it'll, it'll tell you where these come from. So in this case, it's intact. Um, and it'll also tell you um, some of the subcellular localization. So it does depend on the protein entry. We are sorting that new graphic, that graphic out for the new website. So it will be a bit more intuitive next time around. But yeah.